Even without the usual attendance for the cutting down of Nova Scotia's official tree for Boston, this 45-foot white spruce tree still had quite a coming-out party on the Grand Dance property of Heather and Tony Sampson. For starters, on this cool Thursday morning in November, there were several students from Nova Scotia Community College campuses all the way across the province. They're here under the tutelage of NSCC instructors Wadi Long and Dan Nightingale to make sure the tree comes down safely. And just before NSCC instructor Wadi Long carries out the official tree cutting that he has done for many years for this gift for Boston, a few people have something to say in honor of the white spruce that's going to Massachusetts. They include the new Minister of Lands and Forestry for Nova Scotia, Derek Mumberkett. This is a, a very important tradition for us as a province. Uh, our thank you to Boston uh, for their support for us uh, during the Halifax explosion, their care, their love and their compassion. Um, uh, and to have it for Cape Breton is extra special for me uh, as, as an MLA here and the Minister here. To the family, to the Samson family, thank you so much for donating uh, this tree and being part of such a such an amazing tradition uh, for Nova Scotia uh, to do this for Boston each and every year. It has a long-standing tradition, but I think it has special significance this year. So I really want to thank the Sampson family, and as Derek said, the NSCC staff, but also people that are in that, that are in uh, Lands Forest and other departments that are here today. Uh, it's a really important day, and I'm really glad to be a part of it. In addition to the current MP, the white spruce tree, and the Sampsons that helped it grow got a few words of encouragement from the former Cape Breton Canso MP, who will soon be joining the tree in Boston as part of his new job, just recently named as Canada's Consul General to Boston, Roger Kuzner. Not just Cape Breton, but uh, Nova Scotia should be proud that this tradition has been uh, kept alive for so many years, and I know it's very much appreciated. Uh, I've had an opportunity to speak with my colleagues down in Boston over the last number of uh, days and weeks, and uh, and they speak. Uh, they're they're looking forward to the celebration. I, I think it's the fifth that uh, they're going to have the light up. So uh, to all involved that uh, allowed this to uh, come to fruition here today, uh, congratulations and thanks. Uh, when I found out that the tree was coming from here, we told Roger to bring his truck so we could throw out the trunk. But, <laughs> but it isn't just the tree or the consul general that have a Boston connection. As a matter of fact, there's some Boston family history from Tony Sampson himself. My stepfather's mother, she was uh, adopted from Boston when she was two years old. And then she married and she raised her children on this farm. And then it was passed down to my stepfather and then he passed it down to me. So why was the Sampson's tree chosen for the trip to Boston? Tony thinks he has the answers. It had a lot of things. It was easy to get at, and it was uh, had a real nice shape to it, and uh, it was the proper height for what they were looking for and everything. Having learned about the Halifax explosion from the classic Hugh McLennan book, Barometer Rising, both Tony and Heather are pleased to see the tree that's grown on their property going to make New Englanders happy at a time like this. There's a lot of history behind it, and there's a lot of uh, meaning in it to a lot of different people and all Nova Scotians for sure. It's amazing watching this tree go, going to Boston in the process of it. In addition to the historical significance of Boston officials' aid to Halifax following the 1917 explosion, there is also ancestral significance represented by a smudging ceremony and Mi'kmaq prayer given to the tree by local Mi'kmaq elders. So we are in Mi'kmaq. Thank you for this donation to Boston. Uh, and thank you for your prayer uh, today uh, to, to bless the tree that's going down. As I've said, uh, this is such a sacred uh, tradition for Nova Scotia, and to have you here uh, means everything to us. The generosity from Nova Scotia to New England doesn't end with the main tree being loaded onto the truck. As you can see here, there are smaller trees on the ground. These are going from the same site to United Way homeless shelters found throughout Boston to spread a little Christmas cheer to those who need it the most. And shortly after this tree was loaded onto the truck that would eventually take it to New England, it made a couple of stops at Richmond County Schools to allow school children that missed the ceremonies today to be able to see the tree before it heads to New England. And as Tony and Heather Sampson and their dog Teddy Bear watch the tree being loaded onto the truck to head to New England, they can't help but wonder at the idea that this tree is officially dedicated to essential workers around North America during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic.
We have the honor of having the, a very different uh, Boston tree year. This is a yeah. COVID tree. Yeah. Yeah. Want everybody to have a really nice Christmas this year. Yeah. yeah. Everybody near and far. Merry Christmas, Boston. I hope you enjoy the tree and bring some smiles to people. Yeah. We're really looking forward to seeing it all lit up. Really looking forward to it. Following official send-off ceremonies in Halifax on Monday afternoon, the Samson's White Spruce is now headed directly to Boston, where it will be set up and lit up during the first week of December. In Grand Dance, Fort Hill 24-7, I'm Adam Cook.